Welcome to this edition of American Railway, which concentrates on Norfolk Southern and CSX transportation tracks in and between three cities, Lynchburg, Petersburg and Roanoke, situated in central Virginia. After examining NS and CSX operations through Lynchburg, we will follow the Blue Ridge District east to Petersburg, including locations at Maloney, Burkeville, Crewe and Blackstone. That part of the programme will feature Norfolk and Western J-Class 484 No. 611. After exploring Petersburg, we head west to focus on Norfolk Southern traffic in Roanoke, before closing this edition at locations in Alta Vista. At Lynchburg, our cameras are widely separated. One took in views from Riverside Park of the Norfolk Southern Bridge over the James River in the Washington District, while the other chose locations on the CSX James River subdivision in the picturesque Old Town area. Heading north towards Charlottesville over the James River trestle, are an ES44DC number 7606, leading Union Pacific AC45CCTE number 7445, and SD70 ACE number 1001. The local is northbound, powered by a rebuilt GP38-3. A pair of P42DC Genesis locos are in charge of Northeast Regional Train 176, the 7.38 a.m. departure to Boston.
the next filming location will be just to the left of that chemical toilet by the fence. One hundred coal empties are returning west with a heavy variant ES44AH and hockey stick YN2 liveried AC44CW at the head. The independent city of Lynchburg has a population estimated to be around the 81,000 mark. Back in the 1860s, it was the only major city in Virginia not recaptured by the Union before the end of the Civil War, in which it served as a Confederate transport hub and supply depot and had about 30 hospitals. Two C44-9W locos need a rebuilt SD70M-2. The James River Trestle here is a deck plate girder bridge that was built for the Norfolk and Western Railway in 1911. On display in Riverside Park is one of a dozen preserved Chesapeake and Ohio K4 class 284 locos, which was nicknamed Konoha by the CNO after the river running parallel to its main. Elsewhere, they are commonly known as Berkshires. Built in 1947, this example is one of 70 constructed by the American Locomotive Company, with another 20 built by Lima. Designed to haul high speed freight and passenger services, they exerted over 69,000 pounds force tractive effort. We'd hoped to film something coming towards us across the bridge. We had to make do with this. It became clear that the maintenance of way possession may extend to hours. 
the rain became more heavy and the wind picked up. Just as our cameraman was leaving his filming position, there was a loud crack, a rustle and a heavy thud as a broken branch landed just a few feet from where he'd been standing. Heading east from Lynchburg on the Blue Ridge District to film the Cavalier hauled by Norfolk and Western J-Class 484 No. 611, the first location will be the Possum Creek Trestle before seeing it crossing County Road 757. To help get our bearings, the white arrow on this map shows the filming location of the CSX coal empties that we saw earlier. Before resuming scenes featuring 611 through Blackstone, we take a brief look at the Norfolk Southern in heavy rain at Burkeville and Crewe, about two weeks after the Cavalier ran through. These westbound unit coal empties are powered by a C40-9 on point with an SD70 ACU that was rebuilt from a former Union Pacific SD9043 Mac.
Rockville is a comparatively small town with a population estimated to be fewer than 500. At Crewe, we found a former Conrail GP40-2 mated with an RP E4D yard slug that had been converted from a GP9 and equipped for remote control operation. More scenes of the eastbound Cavalier hauled by 611 now at Blackstone, Ford and its arrival at Petersburg.
There were 14 bullet-nosed, streamlined J-Class 484 locomotives built for the Norfolk and Western at their own Roanoke shops from 1941. Number 611 was one of the last batch to be rolled out in 1950, representing the last mainline steam passenger locomotives constructed in the United States. Developing 80,000 pounds force tractive effort, they were capable of a top speed of 110 miles per hour. Number 611 is the only remaining example. Sadly, the rest were scrapped. On the return westward journey of the Cavalier, we captured 611 twice more, near Maloney, west of Burkeville. The return journey was somewhat delayed. For a while, we thought we'd missed it. The crossing barriers are about to drop. On this map of Petersburg, the white arrow points to the Union Station where we saw Norfolk and Western No. 611 arrive hauling the Cavalier previously. 
However, this part of the programme concentrates on the CSX North End subdivision at the Amtrak station and where it crosses the NS Norfolk district. Taking a closer look at that junction, filming locations are on both sides of the track, just to the north of Collier Yard. We arrived just as the southbound Carolinian ran through. This northbound train is powered by four heavy variant ES44AC logos and a rebuilt SD50-3 coupled to the train. Already having 90 hopper cars, the train is pulling forward before setting back into the yard to attach some more. A southbound 118 car manifest is about to pass in the opposite direction, filmed from the overbridge on State Route 604, Halifax Road.
Fifteen minutes later, a Tier 4 compliant ET44AH leads a C40-8W. This train is often referred to colloquially as the juice train due to the refrigerated cars at the rear. As the rain fell more heavily, we retreated to the relative shelter of the Amtrak station, where an intermodal was heading south, powered by an ES44AH and an ET44AH. The station was opened in 1955 by the Atlantic Coast Railroad and is now owned by CSX but operated by Amtrak. It is situated at Ettrick on the western side of Petersburg, not far from the Virginia State University. During 2017 when this was filmed, the station served just fewer than 31,000 passengers. The headlights of Amtrak's approaching Train 53, the auto train, light up the rain in the distance. It runs from Lawton, Virginia to Sanford, Florida. It is often referred to as the world's longest passenger train, 44 vehicles on this occasion, but only 15 are passenger cars, the remaining 29 being auto racks. A pair of P40 DC locos is at the head.
A GP40-2 with a road slug based on a GP35 is in charge of the local. Twenty minutes later, arriving at the station is Northeast Regional Service Train 125, the 11.35 a.m. departure from New York to Norfolk, Virginia. The following morning, we returned to the area around North Collier. Our cameras are on opposite sides of the track as northbound hoppers accelerate through.
Just beyond the CSX No Trespassing sign, the track crosses the bridge over the Norfolk Southern, Norfolk District, running east-west underneath. During six hours at this location, no trains ran through on the Norfolk Southern. As the last of these 90 hoppers pass by, we see the pair switching again. They were on the local yesterday. Shortly afterwards, a maintenance of way track possession halted all through traffic for about 90 minutes while the track was repaired. While one camera waited here patiently, the other relocated to the grade crossing on Grimes Road, just to the north. A manifest is crawling up to the signals. At the head or an ES44AH, an SD40-2 that was built for the Louisville and Nashville in 1979, and an SD70 Mac. The train is drawing forward to clear the signals, just as the hopper train did yesterday, before reversing into the yard to attach trash containers.
Many rail fans have expressed their liking for manifest trains due to the huge variety of cars and goods transported. Before attaching the green trash containers, this one included box cars, hoppers of different types, flat cars, here carrying pipes, pallet cars with their warning to load evenly to prevent tilting, and tank cars containing a variety of liquids such as hydrochloric acid. These are loaded with phenol. Petersburg is an independent city in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Archaeological excavations at a peninsula within the city known as Pocahontas Island found evidence of prehistoric settlements dated to 6,500 years BC. The region was occupied by the Apumutuk when the English first arrived in Virginia in 1607. By 1635, colonists had founded a settlement on the south bank of the Appomattox River. The early trading post in the region was known as Peter's Point. In 1733, Colonel William Boyd II planned a city there to be renamed Petersburg. 100 years later, Petersburg became a major transfer point between competing railroads that ran north-south and east-west through the city, much as the CSX and Norfolk Southern do today. Amtrak Silver Star Train 92 from Miami and Tampa to New York is racing towards its scheduled stop at Petersburg. Check out the variety of motive power hauling this southbound manifest. was a Tier 4 compliant ET44AH, the Union Pacific Loco was an ES44AC, next was a Canadian National ST75I, 
followed by two more CSX locos that were an SD50-2 and a National Railway Equipment 3GS21B genset. In the final third of this programme, we feature the complex layout of railroads in Roanoke, now all operated by Norfolk Southern, before travelling east to visit the intersection of the NS, Alta Vista and Danville districts in the town named Alta Vista. The first location will be the South Roanoke Yard in the Whitethorn district, before moving east to the junction with the Winston-Salem district by the former Virginian station where the Alta Vista district heads east. North from there, at Randolph Street, in the Roanoke district, the next vantage point is a footbridge overlooking the Amtrak station, under construction at the time, with East Roanoke shops in the distance. After a brief look at the shop's yard, where the Blue Ridge district passes on the south side, we will head west to view Park Street Yard. The nearer pair are relatively new Tier 4 compliant ET44AC locos. In the background are two C44-9Ws soon to work an eastbound coal train. On the right of this view is another pair of Dash 9s on a train of hoppers, with a pair of ST70s to the left. The Union Pacific locos are an AC45 CCTE with an SD70 Ace behind. The only brick-built station on its entire network this Virginian Railway passenger station was constructed in 1910. The passenger service was discontinued in 1956, but the station survived and was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2003. The pair of Dash 9s that we saw just now are going to drop onto the coal train just beyond the bridge, with the sound of maintenance of way work at the junction behind us. These locos were built to 4,000 horsepower C40-9W standard, but have been uprated to 4,400 horsepower. Number 8969 was built in 1996, while its partner on this occasion is eight years younger.
As the locos join their train, our cameras relocate to the Virginian station platform to film the departure. Roanoke is an independent city in Virginia and the largest in the southwest of the state with a population estimated at 100,000. Established in 1852, the town was named Big Lick after a large salt outcrop near the Roanoke River which attracted wildlife. The town became Roanoke in 1882 before being chartered as a city only two years later, earning the nickname Magic City. During the 1850s, the Virginia and Tennessee Railroad track between Lynchburg and Bristol on the southern state border included a stop at Big Lick. After the American Civil War, the V&T was combined with two other railroads to form the Atlantic, Mississippi and Ohio Railroad. Unfortunately, the financial collapse of 1873 drove it into receivership. The railroad was purchased at foreclosure by Philadelphia bankers and renamed the Norfolk and Western Railway. Those bankers also controlled the Shenandoah Valley Railroad under construction at the time and selected Big Lick as the junction between the two railroads, triggering the renaming of the town and rapid growth to city status. Early in the 20th century, the Virginian Railway was built through the city following the path of the river. It merged with the Norfolk and Western in 1959. In 1980, the Norfolk and Western teamed up with the Southern Railway paving the way for the creation of today's Norfolk Southern Railway. Three more uprated Dash 9s are approaching Randolph Street from the direction of Glasgow and Buchanan.
At the time of filming, in May 2017, the new Amtrak station was under construction in the right of this view. The Amtrak Northeast Regional Service to Roanoke began less than six months later, on October the 31st. East Roanoke shops are in the distance. Number 8868 is a C40-9 next to uprated wide cab variant number 9762. Rounding the curve from the Blue Ridge district, slow progress is being made by an SD60E leading two more dash nines.
The grey tank cars contain sodium hydroxide solution, commonly known as caustic soda, or lye. It's a strong alkali that can cause chemical burns. As a schoolboy, our cameraman discovered this when he poured some over his fingertips, accidentally, during a chemistry lesson. The Tate and Lyle tank carries corn syrup. After a wait of 15 minutes, the train continued into Park Street Yard. More corn syrup. Elevated temperature liquid was being carried by this Union tank car. This black tank car contained ethanol. The white tank car on the tail carried phosphoric acid, a versatile weak acid that finds use mainly in fertilisers, but can also be used in soaps, detergent, water treatment, toothpaste and even as a food additive. In the East Roanoke shop's yard was number 999. Converted from GP38 number 2911 in 2007 by Norfolk Southern's Juniata Works in Altoona, the BP4 was originally powered by 1080 12 volt lead acid batteries, but the design suffered from poor battery management and packaging issues. It was rebuilt using 864 lead carbon batteries, returning to traffic in 2014. It is believed to deliver 1,350 horsepower and is designed to operate three shifts per charge. Battery life is extended by regenerative braking, which returns about 35% of braking power to the batteries. Filming Park Street Yard was limited to gaps in the fence on Shenandoah Avenue Northwest. This former Sioux Lines SD60 is now a capital finance lease loco. To the left, NS numbers 533 and 541 are GE model B32-8 locos, with another Kefex SD60. Returning to the Virginian station platform, an eastbound manifest is arriving at South Roanoke Yard, hauled by an SD60E and a Dash 9.
three dead locos ferried in the train will be removed to the adjacent track. Number 2510 is an SD70 built in 1993. Next is former Conrail C40-8W built the same year. Last of the three is veteran GP38-2 number 5085 constructed 20 years earlier in 1973 for the Southern Railway. It is one of a minority in the class that has the high short hood rather than the usual low version. It is thought that these three detached locos were on their way to East Roanoke shops. The two train engines will return to the head of their manifest. We hope you have enjoyed this visit to Roanoke. Trains west from here to Montgomery were featured in the previous release of American Railway. The last scenes in this programme are on the Danville district running north-south through Alta Vista. The first train will be a northbound manifest with cameras on both sides of the track. During our morning visit, no trains ran on the east-west Alta Vista district and the rails did not look well used.
On point is a Dash 9 paired with a C40-9 that has the older style cab. Now Norfolk Southern's Danville district, this north-south track was owned by the Southern Railway in the early 1900s when Alta Vista was created. The two lead locos were former Union Pacific 20-year-old SD9043 Max, numbers 8003 and 8004, that were rebuilt relatively recently by Norfolk Southern, designated SD70ACU, and numbered 7233 and 7234 respectively. It may seem a comparatively simple rebuild in that they retained their 16-cylinder 710G prime movers, original alternators and traction motors. However, they are now equipped with cab signalling, positive train control and computer controlled braking and are capable of operation as distributed power units. The most noticeable external difference is the replacement SD70 ACE style cab to meet current FRA crash worthiness standards. When the Tidewater Railway, running east-west, was under construction, 2,000 acres of land, about 8 square kilometres, were purchased near the point where the railroads would intersect. The streets and lots for the new town were laid out around 1905, complete with water and electricity supplies, sewers and telephone service. Named Alta Vista, it was incorporated in 1912. The Tidewater and Deepwater Railways combined to form the Virginian in 1907. The track now forms the Alta Vista district of Norfolk Southern. The final scene in this program was filmed from English Park. Powering this southbound intermodal, an SD70 M-2 was leading an older SD70 M with a Dash 9 attached to the train.
We hope that you have enjoyed this programme concentrating on Norfolk Southern and CSX transportation operations through Lynchburg, Petersburg and Roanoke, together with the Cavalier Steam Special hauled by Norfolk and Western J-Class number 611. The next release in our American Railway series will focus on the CSX Cumberland subdivision through Maryland and West Virginia, including a feature in historic Harper's Ferry. Thank you for joining us.